my father went to, sent to Hampton and came back. Of course, he, he married. And somehow he must have got some progressive ideas at Hampton. And so he was suc successful. And he was elected. Part, that's when the Ocheti Shakoni was probably the last year's one. And I want to show you that picture that's hanging on that wall. That is uh, that picture. It was taken in Rapid City, and um, it's probably one of the last things. This was in the 1930s. And then I got another picture that was taken in Washington, D.C., where my grandfather, brother, and, the, and our, our, my, their cousin, and I, I, Mary's got that picture. I think this was in Pennsylvania. Uh, then we'll put this here. Now, this is a picture in Washington, D.C., the, the names of the, the people are all on the bottom and the tribes. This is probably a time when the Ocheti Shakoni was really strong. And you'll see a period, bowed head and uh, white ghosts and other tribal leaders. And it, it's all explained at the bottom of this picture. But that, I want to tell you, is uh, uh, probably... They're fading away. Now, the chill, what, what made the Ocheti Shakoi fade away? As you see that big picture, and then this other one, what changed this was the, the uh, Wheeler Howard Act. And uh, it's called the, the New Deal. And the the Bureau of Indian Affairs was establishing uh, a by, written bylaws, the Constitution, the bylaws. Those kind of, those bylaws are still in use today by each of the tribes, but each reservation was separate. You see, and you could take Sisseton and Yankton, Lower Brew, Shine River, Standing Rock, Pine Ridge. They're all separate governments. That is when, when the Ocheti Shakoi faded away. And this picture in Rapid City um, uh, is probably the last time because they were talking about the New Deal. And in this picture, you'll see my, my father. You can picture it and look at, the, look at the picture and you'll see, if you see a white head like mine, that's my father. And their names are in the bottom of the two. Okay, I'm going to look here. In the front, see in the front? And there's Crow Creek, is the Crow Creek sign there? Uh, oh, Crow Creek. Yep, I see the Crow yeah. Creek sign. But that's... That was probably the last gathering, a large gathering of Indian people. That's from all tribes. And, um, Could you share a little about that? Could you share a little bit about why they gathered, what, what they did when they gathered? Oh, why they gathered, uh, of course, uh, the, the one in Rapid City was discussing this new deal, the Wheeler Howard Act. And uh, then there's, and you know, at that time, Ben Rifle was a college educated Indian and was fluent in the language. So the government, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, hired him to go to each reservation to explain what the New Deal would do for them. And um, so that's what he did. And uh, so when it came to Crow Creek, my father was on the, uh, was the governing body. 
And so after Ben was talking to them, all the things that they would benefit the tribe and everything else. And so they, in the evening, there is, you know, Fort Thompson was a, is a bustling community. I got a special film on that too. And so when they ended their meeting, the, the tribal leaders came and sat in front of the Wentz store, the grocery store. There was just a big park, you know, bench. And uh, so then when Ben finished his supper, and he came over there and he continued to talk about the New Deal. And my dad said, when he got done, he said, Oh, hit you to conditioning. No, that's not the way it'll be. And that's what the tribe decided. They, they, they did not accept the, the New Deal. So the Crow Creek and I think it's Yankton is the two tribes that never accepted the, the New Deal. And so I, can, I tell the modern day councilman, we are still a treaty tribe. And, and we know Brickley, the Congress has a responsibility to deal directly 